Okay, so you're here because you want to know what it's like being a computer science student studying in NUS. Why should you listen to me? So yeah, my name is Daryl. My friends call me Dago and I'm a year 3 computer science student studying in NUS. So I've been here for quite a while already. It's also worth to note that I'm not one of the high achievers in this course and perhaps I could give you guys a more practical view of what to expect. Not sure if it's just me, but computer science has been growing rapidly over the past few years. And I'm afraid that some people may be buying into the hype, the high starting pay, without actually knowing what they're signing up for. If you do, then good for you. But if not, this is for you. Take it as me passing down knowledge from mistakes I've made myself in the past. Okay, a little more about my channel before we begin. To put it simply, I make shit posts for college. <laughs> As you can see in the videos I've like linked here and there and whatnot. But I do want to pivot into things like college vlogs and tips in the future. Something like what Daniel Tamago does. Uh, my hair is kind of like wonky but uh, it's okay. Okay, so let's start in the beginning. What is computer science? Computer science, based on Google search, is the study of computers and computational systems. And we deal mostly with software and software systems. You know, things like your Mac OS, your OS of your PS4, Nintendo Switch, computer science. I'm, I'm just going to call it CS from now on. CS is not limited to just coding and programming. And there are lots more aspects to it, such as designing how the code would be like, the architecture, as in how the different parts of the code would come together and work together. There's also a lot of theory and yeah, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a lot of other things out there. Okay, so what potential jobs could you get from this degree? Perhaps you could become a game developer for Nintendo or like Ubisoft in Singapore. You could perhaps aim to be a software engineer for Google or quality assurance at Visa. You could even become an animator using computer graphics for companies like Pixar and DreamWorks. You can create a tech startup and be an app developer and create something impactful for the world, you know. There are actually a lot of students in NUS Computing that went on to create pretty successful startups. So think Shopback, Carousel and 99.co just to name a few. And that's the other draw of the computer science besides the pay, which is really the variety that they afforded. Because just about every company, be it tech or not, will eventually require some level of computing personnel. Okay, so now we're all excited about the opportunities. Let's talk about what to expect being a computer science student, at least in NUS. And we're going to split this into a few parts. Firstly, the difficulty. For the difficulty of this course, I'm just going to be real with you. It's tough. Like, really tough. Signing up for this course is like signing up for mental torment and anxiety for the next four years of your life. Nah, I'm just kidding. But, but no cap, this course will be hard. I'm not trying to dramatize things, but... The nature of programming in your early stages, and especially if you're a little slower like me, it's all about persisting through the failure. And most of the time, it's not easy. Okay, let me give you guys a little scenario. You could be going 7 hours on one problem without having any form of tangible progress at all. You could argue that perhaps it's helping you train your mind into critical thinking or computational thinking. But I'm not gonna deny the fact that it can be really demoralizing because it just feels like you wasted seven hours getting to nowhere. I will say though that once you actually solve a problem, seeing your code pass is better than like getting high on alcohol or something. It's straight up like a drug. Moving on. Number two, relatively bad grades. If you persist in this course, you should realistically expect not to get the same grades as you did in A-levels. The value of an A here is much higher than that in A-levels. Just think about it for a second. We all know about the bell curve, right? Kind of like a normal distribution curve and everything. The absolute cream of the crop of A-level students are going to be flocking to this course. You're also up against really smart international students, students from like NUS High, as well as poly kids that may have had a head start in this field. If everyone's the best, some people wouldn't be, right? <laughs> And it may be you, and that's totally fine. It might come as a culture shock at first, but you'll soon realise that it is totally okay. All this time you've been looking to do well in exams, you're looking to enter a good institution. Think about it, your PSLE, you do well to get into a good secondary school, and then you do well for O-levels to get into a good JC, and you do well for A-levels to get into a good course. Now you're already at the end. And most of you unlikely to be taking masters or doctorates anyway. So yeah, grades don't really matter as much here. No one's going to hire you for doing well on the test if you can't actually do work. 
you're going to meet really really smart people and at times think that you're not going to be adequate enough to be in this course but you gotta understand it's all relative to their level which is just really really high <laughs> that's fine it's something I myself struggle with but I constantly remind myself who I'm up against NUS also ranks high for CS so our curriculum is pretty brutal lastly the modules. So what are modules? Just think of modules as topics and subjects of computer science, you know. It's just that we are going to go really really in depth and you're going to spend one whole semester on one topic <laughs> each according to what modules you take. I, did, did that make sense? I, I don't know. When you join CS and any course in general, you'll be required to take a certain set of modules before you're allowed to graduate with this degree. The rest of it will be modules in different focus areas which are a bit more freestyle and yeah, you can basically choose them. Such focus areas are things like software engineering, AI and machine learning, computer graphics and game development, you know, networks and yeah, there's a lot more. I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can have a look. Moving on to the basic modules that we have to take. I'm not going to lie here but most of these basic core modules that you have to complete are pretty boring but they are necessary to build your foundation before you tackle the higher level modules. Honestly, your first two years may be pretty boring, but you'll be opened up to much more interesting modules once you've cleared out the basics. Oh, that's, that's not to say that all these modules are boring. Our basic module is CS1101S, which teaches us programming methodology. And to put it in layman terms, it's just teaching you how to think like a computer. The entire module is gamified, and you have this uh, lovely platform called Source Academy, for you to play around with the code and assignments. If I'm not wrong, CS1010 utilizes something similar as well. Sometimes throughout the module, there's also this sumo bot competition. I'm not so sure whether the online aspect has uh, affected it, but back two years ago, you had to build this robot made out of Legos with your group mates, and you have to program it such that it reacts a certain way when it meets an enemy or detects a certain color. And you guys will have this little sumo bot competition where you would have to push the other bot out of the ring and it's pretty fun stuff uh, honestly. Some other basic modules you have to take are a bunch of like basic math modules which are extensions to A levels. Think linear algebra which is like matrix multiplication and extended differentiation. There are also some communication modules which you guys would have to take so these basic modules still require you to present and talk and write essays. So yeah, your whole life isn't just going to be about programming. A particularly interesting core module for me was CS2103T, which is the basic software engineering introduction module, which all CS students would have to take. It's a fulfilling module because it's the first time most of the students would actually be using their code to create something instead of just like solving math problems and yeah. Okay, for more day-to-day -day stuff, I'll be releasing a day-in-the-life vlog for CS students from a senior's perspective. So hopefully it will add some value to you, knowing what you can come to expect a few years into the course. It's also because I want to grow this channel, and apparently this is the sort of thing that people watch. So yeah, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> That's about it for what I have to say and I hope you guys gain some insight from this. I'm not discouraging anyone from taking this course, but I do want to help people make a more informed choice because CS is definitely not going to be an easy 4 years for you if you choose it. Expect it to be hard, expect it to be tiring, but there's a lot of value to be found if you find your passion in this. So yeah, that's it. It's something different from the usual type of shit posting videos that I usually make. But I wanted to make more videos which provide actual value to people that may be in a position I was in back when I was a clueless kid. So, thanks for watching. Do leave a like, subscribe if you liked it, and comment down below if it was useful to you. It helps out the algorithm. Stay tuned for that day in the live video next week, and I'll see you in the next one.